Well, let's bring in water expert Professor Mike Muller now. Uh, Prof, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, obviously, with what's going on in Hammanskral, it's really focused attention on our ailing water infrastructure. But in reality, we've known for years that we've got massive problems on our hands. How much worse is it these days? You know, Sally, it's difficult to say. As, as you correctly indicate, we've known for years. For instance, Makanda is not, not at all new. Uh, there's been drama going on for ages. The Royval uh, timber water plants in Tuani are also very old stories. So really what we're seeing is, I think we need to perhaps give credit to Minister Mkuno. We're seeing these things brought to light, brought into focus, and we're being told there are problems. And I think the question is, uh, is it getting worse or are we actually now at least recognizing that we have a problem? Because, of course, there are also many parts of the country where people are just not getting water. They might have taps in the, in the yards or taps outside the house, but they don't get any water. So there's a series of problems and they've been ignored. I think it's interesting that we're seeing so much action from the department and the minister. I, I hope it's going to actually change the picture because if we don't, we're in serious trouble. Yeah, and certainly the news coming through, uh, Avi Umtila, our reporter, saying that there's a short-term, medium-term and long-term plan uh, for Haman's Kral. Uh, we have seen attempted interventions before, but the spotlight is firmly on this area. Um, the problem, of course, is that it's going to cost about four billion rand, he tells us. Now, if a third of our sanitation, uh, our municipalities have sanitation and water problems, uh, which is what the DG told me earlier this week, that's a lot of money to fix it. How on earth can we afford to fix this infrastructure? Yeah. I think the first thing that we need to do is say, yes, there's a problem. Secondly, it's going to be very expensive to fix. So third, we really need to prioritize and know where to start, how to start, and then make sure that the money gets spent properly. And I think it's on that last point where uh, I think there's some encouragement because what we're hearing from Minister Mkuno and, and other people in government, I think we heard it from the president today, is that if the municipalities aren't able to do the job for which they were set up, they're going to have to hand over that job to other organizations and they're going to have to hand over the money to other organizations. And probably until that happens, until they start seeing the money and the power and the opportunity that goes with it, taken from them and given to people who are going to use it to do the job properly, I, you know, I think it will change the behavior of municipalities, but it will also enable the national government to intervene effectively. Because too often we've watched them standing on the sidelines saying, we're terribly sorry, we can see that it's terrible, but there's nothing we can do because this is a municipal function and the constitution says local government's responsible. So uh, start by making sure that we can use the money properly and get the right people in place to do the job and to keep them doing the job. And then we're going to have to prioritize and say, where do we act first? And clearly, Hamans Kral and uh, Itwani is going to be one of the first areas to act. But what about Makanda? What about the many other places? That's the question that they're going to have to grapple with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I suppose reports such as the Blue Drop report are a very good way of assessing where the real emergencies are. Now, that report was meant to come out today. It was meant to be public release today. We now hear it's only going to be next week. Not sure why, but if you look back at the last edition that was last year, it found 23% of water supply systems are in the critical risk category. So that says to me, and you, I'm a layman here, but that says to me that nearly a quarter of our tap water in this country is at risk of becoming unsafe. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think it's, it's a fair assessment. What you're, what you're not seeing, and this is part of the problem of the Blue Drop report which, and the Green Drop, which mainly look at the water treatment. How well is the water treated? How safe is it to drink? How well is it treated? Is it safe to dispose of in the rivers? We're missing the fact that a lot of people don't even see that water arriving. So it may be produced safely at the waterworks, but if it doesn't get to the taps where people need it, that becomes a bigger problem. And that, in fact, is probably what's behind the cholera outbreak. 
I do not believe that the cholera outbreak is caused by polluted water from the uh, Temba waterworks. It's caused by the fact that there isn't safe water available and people are having to use other sources and they're actually unable to kind of maintain basic hygiene and, and safe food preparation in their homes because they're dependent on occasionally a water tanker turning up. There's not enough water to stay healthy and safe. Um, and, you know, it, it, it reminds me a little bit of, of the, uh, the COVID uh, story. We were all told that, you know, COVID is uh, spread by air and we have to behave ourselves very carefully and we've got to mask and, and isolate. But actually, cholera spreads in much the same way. It spreads from person to person and uh, it spreads through food and poor food preparation and inadequate hygiene. And if we don't deal with the water supply at the level where it reaches the household, we still we can have safe water at the waterworks, but we won't have healthy people as a result of it. And we've got to make sure that we keep the whole cycle from the waterworks to the tap in the household and then back to the river treated safely. We've got to keep our focus on the entire cycle, not just those treatment plants. Yeah, what you're saying makes so much sense because, um, in fact, cholera can spread really easily as soon as you have human contact. You just need, as you say, someone not to wash their hands properly after going to the bathroom or someone perhaps not to wash vegetable, vegetables properly and they've used contaminated tap water uh, to, or, or any contaminated water to, to water those plants. And there you go. Cholera is moving around. Do you think we've got cholera under control? We've heard of another death, um, this time in Mpumalanga. We know that the cases in Hammondskraal have diminished. Um, but we've also been warned by the health minister that it could spread. Um, what is your sense of where we're going with this one? Yeah, look, it, we've had this before. You know, we had a terrible outbreak uh, 20 years ago in KwaZulu-Natal, which started, and funny enough, we know exactly where it started. Someone came to visit uh, near Ishawi in Guelazana. Uh, they came to visit from M Mozambique where there was an outbreak. There was a party. <laughs> a, a bunch of people from that party came down with cholera. And what you saw then was cholera moving not down rivers or along pipes. It moved down the road from Ishawi towards uh, Tequini, and then it were, moved uphill. So this is what we need to understand. Cholera doesn't just get transmitted through water. It's about people, their behavior, and movement. And I think if, if, if we want to avoid the spread of cholera, we need to stop saying it's a problem of polluted water in Hammondskraal. We need to say we people just like COVID, need to behave safely, they need to look after hygiene, and they need to be helped to have enough water to do that. That's the way we'll stop the spread of cholera. Um, you know, we're lucky it's in, it's, uh, we, we, we're moving into a colder, drier time of year because cholera likes warm weather, it likes muddy, dirty conditions, and so this isn't a good time for cholera to spread. In fact, it's quite surprising it spreads as fast as it has in Hammond's Kral. Um, but that's because the water situation, the sanitation situation is so bad there. But I am hopeful that we won't see a big spread because it's the wrong time of year. Cholera is actually a seasonal disease and this is the wrong season, if we're lucky. If we're lucky, let's hope that the worst is behind us. Of course, tragic uh, that 25 people have lost their lives. Let's hope that is where the losses end. And a good point that you're making, there's a lot of work that has to be done. and it needs to be done by targeting the most critical areas because that is how diseases such as cholera are unleashed because it's all too easy. If you can't trust your tap water, you'll use other sources and that's where your risk certainly increases. Thank you so much for speaking to us this evening, water expert Professor Mike Muller.